Well, hey folks, it's John with Ozarks Backroads with you today. We're back in the uh, Ozarks Backroads World Headquarters garage. We're finishing up our uh, winter service here on the uh, Triumph Tiger 800, the 2019 model. We've already done the uh, steering head, uh, steering stem bearings in the front end. We've done the plugs, the air filter, did the throttle body sink. So now we're gonna pull the rear swing arm, service the bearings in it, and then all the linkage on the rear shock, pull all that apart, service the bearings in that. So stick around, we'll finish up the uh, winter service here on the 2019 Triumph Tiger 800. Here we are on the, uh, on the right side of the bike. Now I've got the bike up on a, uh, on a jack here. You could also do this on the center stand. If you just had the bike up on the center stand, that would be fine, do it on the floor. Uh, I couldn't get it up on the center stand up on this lift, so I jacked mine up and just let the center stand fall out of the way there. But any, either way is fine. You can do this on the floor. So the first thing we're going to need to do is uh, we need to get this muffler off. The, uh, the lower control arm kind of wraps around it back here, and uh, it won't come off with this pipe in the way, so we're going to have to get the muffler off. We got a hanger up here and then just a, uh, we got a sleeve with a lead gasket in here that this pipe slips into. So we'll uh, loosen this up and then take this hanger off and it should hopefully come out of there. I'm hoping I can do it without removing the luggage racks, but uh, your, uh, your situation may be different than mine. Yeah, it may come up out of there. We, I don't know. I believe we're going to make it. So yes, that will come off without removing the uh, the rack mount there. Well, that's excellent. We've got the brake line and the wire for the uh, wheel sensor. There's a couple of. Uh, tabs holding it on to the top of the uh, con uh, control arm so we need to take those out and get that all free because we're taking the arm out of there and then we'll take the brake caliper off and pull the screw out here and remove this uh, this wheel sensor i pulled the brake caliper off and the wheel sensor i've got them laying up on top of the seat here and I went ahead and uh, ran my uh, adjusters in on the axles, ran them forward, pulled my axle and uh, slipped my chain off the sprocket on the other side and uh, backed my wheel out. So I've got the wheel off. Pretty much everything on this side of the swing arm is now off. So it's ready to go to come off here. So we need to go around to the other side. We've got uh, a chain guard and some other things that need to come off of the swing arm over there before we're ready to unhook all the linkage and see if we can get the swing arm off. We're back over here on the left side of the bike and we got a few things we need to get off of this swing arm and out of this area here before we are, we're gonna be ready to get this linkage unhooked under here. But uh, right now I'm gonna pull this chain guard off. I've got three, uh, three screws here, two here, and then there's one in a hole right in here and then this will come off. And then I'm gonna go ahead and remove this guard here um, just for visibility. And I'm gonna remove this stop for the, uh, the center sand stop here so we can see in here what we're doing behind it with the camera. I don't think you would have to do that if you weren't filming it. You could probably leave this and this on. So we'll get this cover off here and these off where we can see what's going on back here with the shock and see about getting this linkage unhooked. I've gotten the, uh, the chain guide off of it and uh, the little covers that was here around this, I got those off. This is our main swing arm bolt behind this cute little cover right here. And each side has a little cover on it, so we'll take these off and then uh, we can get to our swing arm bolt, the big bolt. And we've got a big nut right here that uh, we got to get off and then that bolt will push through. 
I got my, my nut off of the, the shaft here for the swing arm. This is the main shaft in the front of the swing arm. <clears throat> Under here you can see the shock coming down, going into this uh, link system, and then you got these two links. There's one on either side here that run and, and hook into the bottom of the swing arm right here, and there's a bolt through it. So I've got the nut off of the other side right here. And I've got a uh, stand that I can set my swing arm on when I take this bolt out and unhook these links. So I'm going to slide this out. That releases the swing arm from the shock. So I'm going to set it down on my stand here. So the swing arm is now loose from the shock linkage. So all I've got holding it in right now is just this, uh, the main bolt here through the swing arm. So I'm going to go ahead and push that through and pull it out the other side. All right, that's a big old bolt. Okay, our swing arm is coming out of there. It's Our swing arm is now out, so we've got some bearings inside uh, inside here where these that these spacers run on. So we're going to clean this up, pull these spacers out, and then we'll pack grease in these bearings, these needle bearings, and then underneath the swing arm with two links hooked on that ran to the shock. There's another sleeve here that runs through needle bearings here, and it'll uh, we'll do the same thing. Pack those with grease. We're looking at the shock here, the bottom of it. These are the two link arms that hooked into the bottom of the uh, swing arm with the bolt through it. We got the swing arm off. These are loose now. Then I got one bolt here that goes through the bottom of the shock into this link. We're going to go ahead and take it off. And we've got another bolt up here that hooks the uh, link assembly to the frame. And we'll take that bolt out as well. So this will drop our link out here. All three of these have sleeves that go through that the bolt runs through the center of the sleeve and the sleeve runs in needle bearings. So we'll take the sleeves out of each one of these and expose the needle bearings and there's a little seal on the end. We'll clean those, we'll wipe those out and uh, put fresh grease in these. So here we'll have a look at this bearing. And uh, if we look at this one, you can see this, there's the sleeve that runs through here that runs in the bear, that runs on the needle bearing. And we've got a seal right here. Push the sleeve out from the back, our seal comes off kind of a cone shaped seal. The cone goes to the outside and then we'll pull our sleeve out of it. Looks like that. Nice and smooth and clean and I don't feel any uh, anything going on there. No wear. And then if we look in here you can get a look at the uh, the needle bearings in here. It's a cage needle bearing. I'll wipe this out, get it as dry as I can, then we'll pack that full of grease. I wiped this out as best I could just with a towel and just kept turning it and getting all the grease out I could. We don't have any wear on, on our uh, sleeve here. It's nice and smooth. I don't feel any ridges or anything starting there, so we're in good shape with our bearing. So now I'm just going to pack this bearing with some, uh, some high temperature grease, some wheel bearing grease, and I'm just going to put the grease in there and then push it push it down into the needles and eventually we're going to get it pushed through the needles and it'll start coming out on the other side against the race that they're running on and we'll have grease all the way through the bearing so this will take a little time but we'll get it pushed through okay we got the grease pressed through the needle bearing uh, that's the main thing with this. You just keep pressing and working the grease 
uh, into the bearing, into the needles. And eventually you'll see them, the grease start squirting up off around the ends of the needles coming out the other side. So that's what we've got going on here. This is nice and clean. My sleeve, I'm going to go ahead and put a little grease on it. We've got two seals. There's a black lip seal right here you can see that's driven in. And there's the same seal on the back side, on the inside in here. So we've got two lip seals. And they're in good shape. We'll slide our sleeve back through. And then we've got this spacer, this cone-shaped spacer that came off. It sits in here and, and uh, just like that. And then there's no spacer on the back side. There's just the lip seal. So that is how we uh, service these two bearings. I flipped my A arm or my trailing arm over and this is where the two links that hook to the shock run up here and they hook in on either side here on the bottom of the A of uh, bottom of the trailing arm here. So there's a bearing back here and a bearing up here on either end of this with a big long sleeve that runs through both of them. We can push this out. Kind of like the sleeve in the other bearing, it's just longer and smaller. So I'm feeling for any uh, anywhere on this, I don't feel anything, I don't see anything uh, as far as wear goes. Same type deal, we don't have the spacers the big nylon spacer that was on the uh, on the pivot bolts up here, but we've just got the lip seals driven in on either end, and then the bearing sits right behind the lip seals there. So it's the same as just a smaller cage needle bearing in here uh, with a seal over it. So I'm going to go through the same procedure, wipe this out with a uh, with a towel, kind of work the bearing around, and get all the the grease off I can get, and then I'll go to packing that back uh, with fresh grease, packing that grease down in that uh, needle bearing all the way around, and you can kind of turn the needle bearings as you do it. And I'll just keep packing until uh, the grease starts coming out around the end of the needles on either end, and uh, then I know it's packed. Okay, well we've got our uh, bearings all the grease i can get pressed into these needle bearings i greased up my sleeve i pushed it back in got it back in place here well we've got our our rear uh, shock linkage systems out here that we've got bearings in here this is where our shock and our coil spring and our shock hook on right here so i'm going to do these one at a time so i can keep all the bolts in order and it's the same system um, we got a sleeve that goes through it with a cage needle bearing on the inside. So we need, need to go through the same process, wipe these out, press the grease in the bearings, grease this, put it back in. We've got a seal on both sides, keep water and dirt and crap out of it. This one with the two links that run back to our swing arm, Uh, it's the same deal, the big long sleeve that goes through uh, the, whole, the whole piece. And then there's a, a needle bearing here on this end and a needle bearing here on this end. So all of these needle bearings, it's the same process as we did on the swing arm. They're just a little smaller needle bearing. Got the same thing going on right here on this end here. I'll wipe all these out, pack them with grease, and we're going to be ready to put this bike back together. We've got our... Uh, Drag link, all of our bearings are greased up. Sleeves are back in them. Got all the needles pressed full of grease. So we're gonna see if we can get this back in the, install this back under here. Our drag link goes in like this. So I'm gonna start here where it bolts to the frame. There it goes. We've got everything uh, in the suspension that moves. We've got all the bearings greased. The only th other thing that moves is the top of this shock up here where it mounts to the top of the frame. And it's mounted in a rubber, uh, rubber sleeve. There's no bearings up there. So there's nothing to do up there. So we don't have to actually remove the shock. So I got the one bolt in here. 
and then this one will hook in through the to the shock if we can get it in place there it goes and then these two hook into our uh, the bottom of the swing arm once we get it in there I'll go ahead and tighten up these two bolts where we've got it mounted to the frame and to the shock and then this one we'll have to wait till we get our uh, I'll probably wait till I get it hooked up to the uh, swing arm and just tighten do both of them at the same time this one and the one on the swing arm so all three of these and the ones here where it goes under the swing arm will torque to 60 foot pounds it's time to try to get this swing arm installed I gotta be sure to put my chain my swing arm inside my chain here otherwise I'll be in trouble I'm gonna set it up there so it wouldn't fall down on me there it goes There it goes. Whoo, I think I can get the bolt started, maybe. Yep. Got the bolt in, that wasn't bad at all. Now we'll put our uh, washer back on and then our nut here. Torque it down. The nut here on the swing arm bolt, uh, it says 80 foot pounds on it. I've got the, the ratchet tie wrapped in place and the socket on the nut on the other side so I can tighten this up. All right, 80 pounds it is. No play in it at all. Nice and smooth. This is going really good. We've got our uh, swing arm uh, bolt here, the big long bolt, the pivot bolt. Got it torqued to uh, 80 foot pounds. Now we're going to hook up our dog bones here, or our links, off of the uh, drag link is what we call this piece here, a drag link. So we're going to hook these up. You'll notice I've had people comment on this in the past, but I always grease any of my through bolts like this, this big bolt here or my axle bolts through my wheels or any, any through bolt like this. I always grease them. And it's not because uh, something's running on them or turning on them. It's just that these things will corrode in the bike. Uh, so any of these long through bolts, you take them out, they'll have corrosion on them. If you'll cover those with grease, before you install them, they won't be corroded the next time you pull them out. So that's why I always grease with my through bolts on these bikes, because when you're working with aluminum and steel, you're going to get corrosion. Let's see if we can get this first one going here. I'll have to lift this up just a little bit. And we'll go on the other side. Get our nut started on it. We'll torque this one down the same as uh, these other ones, 60 foot-pounds on all of these. So this one will go 60 as well. All right, well that's pretty much the installation of the uh, swing arm there. Um, got to put my guide back on it and uh, get my wheel mounted back up and my calipers back on, then slip that muffler on. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to doing the bearings on the swing arm here. Uh, this was really easy. I got some things I've taken off here just so I could film it easier, but I'll put all that stuff back on. But uh, I'm not going to bore you with mounting up the wheel and the brakes and all that. We've been through all that before. That's kind of a quick down and dirty way to do your rear swing arm uh, to grease your bearings and stuff here. Everything that moves has got uh, all the bearings that have had grease packed in them now. Well, folks, I appreciate you all hanging out with me, checking out some more service on the 2019 Triumph Tiger 800. I believe we're in pretty good shape for a full season this year. I hope to 
get a lot more time on the tiger than I did uh, last year in 20. Uh, it was hard to get out and get, a, get away with the tiger, but we're going to do some trips this year. I invite you all to come back and see me until I catch up with you again. You all take care of yourselves. We'll catch you next time.